Hey guys, uh, this is going to be a quick video. Uh, someone's been asking how to set up ST Link with a Talik True Studio. Um, so I guess here's going to be a quick and dirty video about that. Everything that I'm going to go over is actually mentioned in a PDF file that Atalic, uh offers. And I'm going to post this link on the description. So if you if I miss something during the videos, during the video you can go ahead and consult this uh, this PDF here I'm not gonna go over everything I'm just gonna set up the ST link with it um, they also do somewhere where you can modify the debug configuration and all this stuff but I'm gonna make it just so you can upload with Atalic because if you notice on Atalic True Studio there's no upload button there's no button where you can just simply upload it's there's only the build button and then there's the debug button but what if you just want to upload? You don't want to necessarily enter debug mode, you know? So what this will give you is the ability to go here to external tools and click this, for example, and it'll just, you see, it just uploads. It uploads your um, your firmware, and there, it doesn't enter debug mode. And I hated that about that, um, about this IDE, but now, it, now you know, I fixed it. Um, so first things first, uh, you need to know the file path to your where your ST link is. Now ST link comes with a command line interface as well as a GUI interface. Uh, for me, it, it's in my C drive, uh, program files x86. This may differ on your computer, but you should you should be able to find it, and you should have this if you've used ST link before. Um, so yeah, program files. Then you're gonna go to ST Microelectronics. You're gonna go to ST Link Utility, ST Link Utility again, and in here is where you'll find this uh, CLI file. So you're gonna to have to um, take note of this entire path, all right? And we'll come back that to that in a second. So I'm gonna go ahead and set up, I uh, guess, a new one since I already have one, but I'm gonna set up a new one. So you're gonna to go to Run, Run. Uh, you're gonna go down to where it says External Tools, and you're going to click External Tools Configuration. Then you're going to be presented with this uh, sort of menu. It may look different depending which of these tabs is open by default. But let's just say it's the main tab. You're going to go click on where it says program and you can do new. You can right click new or you can press this little uh, thing over here. So here you can go ahead and name it whatever you want. So let's call this ST link. Um, I guess I'll, I'll call it two. Okay, now in location, here is where you're going to get the full path to that STLink uh, CLI file. So you're going to go ahead and copy this. You're going to paste it right there. But you also have to actually include the name of the file because it wants the actual f command file. Um, so then you're going to add this name right here with a .exe extension. So it's ST, all capitals st dash link underscore cli dot exc st dash link underscore cli dot exe okay now where it says working directory you're gonna add the same path but this time minus that uh, exe stuff so you just add the path but don't include the file so just the original path you copied from um, from up here just this path That'll be um, what you're gonna go ahead and paste right there, okay? Now, as far as arguments co is concerned, if you go to the PDF file, um, they give you some arguments here that you can put there. Um, it's gonna be this dash C dash ID equals zero, as whatever. But you'll notice that they give you, let me make this bigger so you guys can see. You notice they give you uh, this as an argument. You have to pass it the actual, um, the path to the hex file of, of the project that you are using. So that means that when you open a different project, that command is not going to work because you have a hard coded path here to a specific hex file. So you you don't want that. What you want is a um, a more generic sort of thing. So it took me a while to figure out. Um, but the actual commands you want to use, okay, so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to copy the commands from my original installation, right? So I'm going to just press apply for now, but you shouldn't do that just yet. So I'm going to press it apply so it'll let me click on this. 
So I'm pressing apply. And what I want is to get these commands from my previous uh, version that I made. Now these commands right here, it's the same commands that they give you in the in that PDF file. But instead of hard coding the path, I gave it these variables where it'll take whatever path of whatever project I'm currently working on, it'll add that hex file and then the dot hex extension. So this will be a more generic path that should work with every project that you use. Now the way I figured this out is because there are these uh, environment variables over here that you can click and it'll tell you, for example, when you add this variable, this uh, project path variable, it'll give you, it'll return the path and you can see the explanation right here, it'll return the path of the workspace a relative path of a resource project whatever the point is it was hard to figure out because there's project name there's project location project path resource location resource name so I'm like what the hell do I use eventually I got it and it's uh, this is what I well, at least what works for me where I use project location slash debug slash project name and then curly braces blah 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 dot hex whatever the point is this is what worked for me, so I'm going to copy that from my original one. I'm going to come back here. Um, why is not it let me? There you go. And I'm going to go ahead and paste that in the argument sections of this new um, thing that we've created. And I'm going to post this exact text on the description, so you don't have to worry if if you can't see this because I know it's on. It's going to it appears quite small, and I, I can't really zoom into this. Um, so you should try to view these videos in full screen, but I'll paste this text into my description so you can just paste that here Once you have that um, that's pretty much it um, You don't have to worry about any of this It's all gonna be default stuff. I didn't change anything here So then there's one more step, right? We're gonna click apply now so we can go ahead and apply that and What you want to do is at this point You're gonna close this Okay but it's still not going to work because if you go here, it doesn't appear here. You have to actually run it once so it can appear here. But you cannot run it yet because you don't have this ID doesn't make uh, hex files by default. So you're going to go to project. Now, uh, this ID is also a little weird because if you've actually, if I'm, if, even though I have this main op open and this main corresponds with this project, but if, my, if I have this clicked, activated, all these menu items will correspond to this project even though what I have open is a main for this project right so always make sure you you know you're you're actually you have highlighted the actual project you want to um, you know change so um, go ahead and go to project properties then you're going to go to C C++ uh, is it build let me see Yep, so you're going to go to C, C++ build under this properties uh, menu. You're going to open it up, you're going to expand it, whatever. Then you're going to go down to where it says settings. You're going to click on that. Once you click on that, you're going to get these tabs. You're going to go to where it says tool settings. Once you do that, you're going to go down this menu and you're going to see where it says output format. Now by default, this is going to be unchecked. You're going to check this convert build output. You're going to check that and it should say Intel hex. If not, you can go ahead and click this drop down and select Intel hex. Then you're going to press apply. This makes it so that, and then you're going to press OK. This makes it so that when you build the project, it actually builds a hex file for you. It'll show you here that it builds the, the, um, the uh, what you might call it, the hex file name and it also builds an um, ELF file. So now that that's done, we're gonna go, um, we can't just run it yet because obviously we, we have to run it from here. So go back to um, run, go to external tools again, go to external tools configuration, go back to this configuration thing that you, you just made, and from there, click run. Now it's going to go ahead and run it and it's going to upload it using ST-Link and there you go, it did it. Now that you ran it at least once from that menu, it should appear here in this external things. So it see how it appears there now. So now you can just run it from there anytime that you want to upload to the chip without entering uh, debug mode. 
Um, and yeah, that's basically it. So if there's anything there that I might have missed, I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, that, that should do it. Again, I'm going to post the text that I pasted in, into that menu, um, into that window. And I'm also going to post this um, PDF file link on the description, guys. So I hope that helps.